Hi everyone, Phil Pendlebury here and I hope you're having a super mega large day. Welcome back to the Steinberg Nuendo channel and my little section, Nuendo Explain. So here we are on the second part of my little mini series or duology, which is all about Nuendo's dialogue workflow enhancement tools, or some of them. In the last one, we had a look at direct offline processing in quite some detail. Uh, so you can check that out if you like. And we also cleaned up some noisy dialogue. In this one, we're going to look at tonal match. And we're also going to look at the ways to detect dialogue, i.e. separating it from other things. And we'll briefly show how that works with the ADR. Although we're not going to go into detail on ADR because we're saving that for another video. Uh, just before we do carry on, once again, thanks ever so much for all the comments and suggestions, positive vibes, much appreciated. And please keep them coming. As I always say, really nice to get suggestions uh, for future content. Okay, so let's move into it. So the first thing we're going to look at here will be tonal match. Once again, headphones on for me. And if you guys can put your headphones on too, it might be useful because again, as I always say, some of this is quite subtle. So in the last video, we had a look at this file here, which is uh, some dialogue. Let's have a quick listen. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. Here in Studio Two, we're recording an advert for a new movie which is coming out next year. That's the initial clip, and there's still some noise behind that, which we dealt with in the last video. And we went into some detail about how to use direct offline processing with that as well. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to try and match the sound of this one here. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. So we quite like the sound of that one, and we want to try and get this one sounding like this. So we want to get the orange part to sound like the green one. So for that, we're going to use, once again, another free tool that comes with New Endo 13, which is the Sound Profiler. And again, as I always say, there are other tools that do these jobs, but this one, I must emphasize, is provided free with New Endo 13. So let's go into it. So we've had a listen to that. Let's just check it one more time. Please can you take a note not to... Nice and thin. And the Vox noise with the noise... Hello, can I help you? Hmm, ...is also nope. a bit boomy. Now, that's our target. And this is the reference. So the first thing we're going to do is select the target track, and we're going to open up Direct Offline Processing, like so. And you can see that there's nothing selected. We'll now go to Profile, and we'll add our Sound Profiler. At the moment, nothing's going to happen because we need to select a reference. So how do we do that? Well, we can either Use the little E button here, select the reference track, which is the green one, and add it. So that's one way of doing it. And the other way to do it would be to keep that green part there selected, go to the menu, we'll go to audio, and we'll go to the sound references panel, which I'll bring up here. Because that part is now selected, that's our reference, don't forget, that's the one that we want that orange part to sound like. Make sure it's selected, press the plus button, we can audition it. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or... And that's now selected as a reference. And we can add as many of those as we want, but in this case, we'll use this particular one only. So we've selected our reference, I've shown you two ways to do that. Now what we do is go back to our target. We can actually mute the reference completely. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going And once again, we select the sound profiler. We go to references and make sure that the green part is selected as a reference. And now we can listen. Hello, can I help you? 
Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. And as you can see from the display here, what's happening is that there's a frequency uh, spectrum that's being built up from the reference, which is being applied to the target. So let's just listen to it once again without. So we'll discard it. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. And then once again, we'll add the profiler in. Make sure that the reference is selected, which it is. And we should now find that when we play this, it sounds slightly thinner and more like the green part. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning. Let's play. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're we'll recording the lots ambience of voices today. Off. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. So that's pretty cool. Now, what we can also do here is add the denoiser before that. So if we now go to plugin and we go to voice separator and apply the voice separator like we did previously, okay, and then we'll go back to our sound profiler. Again, double check that everything is set as it should be. And we'll apply that. We should have a result. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. So what we've done there is we've eliminated the background noise with the voice separator. And then we've also matched the EQ from the green part to the orange part. And the other nice thing that we can do, let's just leave that down at zero here. The other nice thing we can do, we can go back to voice separator and we can maybe add a little bit of that back in. And let's play that one more time. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. So we still have the ability to fiddle around until we make it permanent, which we'll do in a second. Another nice thing we can do, as you can see down here, we have our little favorites area where previously we did denoise and a reverb. But what we can do now is we're happy with the results of that. We can select both of those plugins or both of those processes, drag them down to the favorites area, give them a, a name, denoise and match. And that means that's now available to be used whenever we want it. So if we go back to our orange part here and actually delete that completely, let's just have a quick listen. This is the actual file that's playing now in the project. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let As you can hear, it's noisy and it still has its original EQ. Once again, quickly play you the green part. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death. And we can go to the orange part and select our favorite that we had earlier on, click that, let it do its stuff, apply it. We can now close direct offline processing, have a listen. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look. So we've managed to treat the orange part to sound like the green part. We've stored it as a favorite, which means that if we've got many more of these same kind of files, we can go around and click and apply very, very easily. And the final thing I'd like to do before we move out of direct offline processing is just make it permanent, which I showed you how to do this last time, but this means that everything that we've just done is now burnt in to that file. So we'll select the file, we'll go to audio, we'll go direct offline processing permanent. We get the message saying, are we sure? And yes, we are. And there we have Hello, it. Can I help you? Hmm, no problem. 
Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. Here in Studio Two, we're recording an advert for a new movie which is coming out next year. And there we have it. So now that we've got that file all cleaned up and EQ'd how we like it, or something like how we like it, let's have a look at splitting that up with Detect Silence. So we select the part, we go up to the menu, Audio, Advanced, Detect Silence. And as you can see, when we open the dialog, it has already analyzed the file for us. We can do that again if we try a different method, but let's just do it like this. And it's automatically detected all that dialog, including the gaps. Recording lots of voices today. There's also another method which would be using the peak level and doing that, it's like a kind of a noise gate kind of thing. We can select the threshold to what the detect silence dialogue thinks is actual open mic, as it were. And you can see that sometimes you can get that a little bit more accurate. If we zoom in, you can see there's a space at the end and we can control that by pre-roll and post-roll. We can also apply small fades and we can add as regions. We can strip the silence completely, or in this case, what we're going to do is keep the silent segments, mute the silent segments, and select them because I'm just going to show you how it works. So let's do that. We'll go back to our actual dialog. We'll analyze, we'll leave the settings as they were, and we'll go process. And now you can see that the muted parts were where the silence was. And if I press the delete key, we have those parts without any silence. And if I undo that, of course, the useful part here, let's just remove that for the time being. The useful part here would be that we can now drag those muted parts down to another track in case we want to use them for any other purpose, i.e. if we wanted to extend them to create a room tone or something like that. Okay, so let's move on to our final little section here. And the final thing I'd like to show you here will lead us on to a future video about ADR. But for now, I'm just gonna show you a nice little trick that we can do with those parts that have been separated by the Detect Silence dialog. So if we select the parts here, you can see they're all selected. We'll go to the menu, we'll go to project, and we'll go to create markers from selected events. So that speaks for itself. It's going to give us a bunch of markers based on what we've selected. We can choose position markers. We can make it a new marker track, and we have various attributes from the file that we can give to the marker attributes or the marker names. So for example, event name, would become the description of the marker, the track name would become the comment, and so on. And we can add as many of those as we want to. There's a whole bunch of things to choose from. As it is, we'll leave it at that. I'll just quickly show you position markers. So we do that, and you'll see that the marker channel has been created down here. And there are all the individual position markers. But if we undo that, once again, let's select all those parts. And we'll go back to project, create markers from selected events. And we'll do my preferred method, which is cycle markers, new marker track. Let's do it. And this time the markers are cycle markers. Excellent. Now, the other thing which is really useful is if we just get that out of the way for the moment, we'll let it do it one more time. Now that we've set everything up how we like it, we can select that, we can go to project, and we can go with current settings, and immediately we get another marker track with those settings that we used earlier. Really useful, and maybe we can just make that a slightly brighter color so that they're more visible, and we can zoom in a little bit. So you can see we've now got a bunch of markers, cycle markers, which delineate all of those 
individual dialog parts. And the next step would be to open the ADR panel, choose the marker track, which is this one here. And now we can manipulate all of those. In fact, if I move this down a little bit, you can see that we can step through those markers and do various ADR tasks, including adding the dialog and of course, actually performing the ADR. But we're not gonna go into that now. This video isn't about ADR, but I just thought that was useful because it does come in tandem with the Detect Silence dialog. Okay, that concludes part two of our little duology about some of Nuendo's dialogue workflow tools. I hope it made sense to you and I hope it's going to be helpful. And once again, thanks ever so much for all the comments and suggestions. Positive vibes, it's all good. Really good to see it. And don't forget, suggestions for future content, always really appreciated. And finally, of course, it is my duty to remind you to click that little like and subscribe button. It's really helpful. Hope you have a great rest of the day or evening, wherever you are, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Cheers for now.